finish this slide 10 and then I took slide 12 and I just tricked it out a little bit so I didn't this is not post on D2L it's not on the test it's just I decided to turn it into a thought experiment because I thought that would please you on Wednesday morning and you can see these two don't have any they won't be on the test I mean everything that you guys know how to find out what's going to be on the test but but I did want to explain this concept um, so I'm going to do this slide and then I'm going to jump to after load and then we're going to start doing some physio X okay because I know if I put this slide up everybody will say hey that's not on my PowerPoint presentation so I thought I'd explain that to calm your trauma. <laughs> All right, so here's what I was thinking. So let's say you have two hearts, and they're exactly the same genetic makeup, and they were, each, each of the hearts uh, were giving, given uh, an end diastolic volume or a preload of 135 mils. So, that means that the, vent, the sarcomeres in the ventricles look like this, right? So remember the orange, that's the myosin. What's the blue? Actin. Actin. What do you think these little springy things are? This is a new cartoon. <laughs> it starts with a T. <laughs> Titan. Titan, okay. Titan, and it's elastic tissue. So it helps the <laughs> sarcomeres that, that, so that, such that they're springy. So, and then this is the M line, this thing right here. The M line is where the myosin attaches to. So in heart one, the end diastolic volume is 135 mils. In heart two, the end diastolic volume is 135 mils. So they're both stretched to the same uh, volume. Their sarcomeres all look the same, but in heart one, there's no sympathetic nervous system innervation. In heart two, you do give symp sympathetic nervous system innervation. So, so, and you know, sympathetic nervous system is going to increase the contractility. How does it do that? How does sympathetic nervous system increase contractility? Norepinephrine. Yep. And what is norepinephrine? What, norepinephrine. What does it bind to? Uh, calcium. Calcium channels. Calcium channels on the cardiac contractile cells, more calcium gets in, you get a, a stronger force of contraction. So in heart one, the stroke volume is gonna be 70 mils. In heart two, with sympathetic nervous system, more calcium, higher contractility, the, the stroke volume is gonna be 100 mils. Neuroepinephrine hits the uh, voltage gated too, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep, good call voltage gated and calcium gated and then um, after you contract you're going to have an end systolic volume or after systole you're going to have a volume it's going to be higher in the heart without sympathetic nervous system it's going to be lower there's going to be less volume in the heart that had sympathetic <laughs> nervous system because you pumped more out and had a higher stroke volume Dig? See, wasn't that fun to do? I'm glad that I. Do you guys do, you guys do thought experiments? That, as a rule, kind of, some do, some don't. It's kind of fun. So then I'm just going to jump over this because I'm just kind of talking about the same stuff, only going into a lot of detail that I'm gonna, not going to ask you on the test. But I am going to talk about afterload on the test. So I told you there was a preload. And Preload is associated with which volume? So preload is a pressure, but it's associated with which volume? Pardon me? The EDV. EDV, end diastolic volume. That's preload. Afterload is the pressure in the artery. So in this cart, you've seen this cartoon before when we did cardiac cycle. But afterload is the pressure associated uh, is associated with the arteries. So that's the pressure that the ventricle has to overcome to pump the blood out. So that's called the afterload. And we've talked about this before. Remember when we said the intraventricular pressure has to be greater than the interarterial pressure in order for which valves to open? 
the semilunar valves, yeah, pulmonary and aortic semilunar valves. Now, I'm just saying that because there's a volume of blood in those arteries, that volume of blood is associated with a pressure, and now we're giving that pressure a name. It's called the afterload. So now we have preload and afterload. So what do you think happens if you're, well, you, you guys know this, your aorta, this is the aorta, it goes out to all your named arteries. Have you guys started memorizing those for the lab practical yet? Like the brachial artery, the femoral artery. <laughs> Anything associated with the bone, it's got a name of artery. But what do you think happens when, say the femoral artery, those arteries downstream, they get disease, so they have a bunch of plaque in them, and now they get smaller. What do you think that does to the afterload, the pressure in the, Increases it's going to increase the afterload. And that means, if you increase the afterload, that means the ventricles are going to have to contract even more forcefully to eject the blood through the arteries. No bueno. Yeah, not good. So, a, diseased blood vessels can increase the afterload. That means your heart has to pump harder. That means your heart will fail sooner than it's supposed to, than God intended. Whatever that means. And then we've talked about this, the, the pressure in the pulmonary trunk is less than the aorta, so the right ventricle doesn't have to work as hard, but the, the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery pumps the same volume, um, or the, sorry, the right ventricle that sends blood into the pulmonary trunk, the right ventricle sit, still pumps the same volume as the left ventricle. And then we talked about this, when you have hypertension or high blood pressure, you decrease the diameter. So here's an artery. Here's a normal artery. You can see how nice and patent or open it is. Here's a hypertensive artery. Um, decreased diameter. The heart has to work harder. And then the ventricles, I say here, the ventricles pathologically hypertrophy. So what's hypertrophy? They get bigger. Lance Armstrong, well, that's kind of pathologic because he took drugs. But if you're like working out, you you can get a hypertrophic heart. It's not pathologic. But in this case, it's pathologic because it has to work against the afterload. Okay. Physio X. Let's do Physio X activities two, four, and five. So, we're going to look at vagus nerve. What's the vagus nerve? It's a large nerve associated with the... It does go to the heart. Probably goes to the colon. Is it sympathetic or parasympathetic? Sympathetic. It's parasympathetic. So, examining the effect of vagus nerve stimulation on the heart, you can tell right now what's going to what's going to happen to the heart rate is it going to go up or down with vagus nerve stimulation 